Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you so much for watching. So I recently got some comments on videos I did and they came in two primary forms. First, there was a question about how to use text and create essentially signs using easel. And then the second question really revolved around how to take your design and actually get it into your machine and make something and show the end-to-end -end process. So what I thought I would do here is I would just make a quick sign that I've been meaning to make for a while now, show you the end-to-end -end process in Easel, show you how to use Easel with the Onefinity here, which is behind me, and then you can uh, maybe adapt that process to whatever machine you happen to have on hand. So what I'd like to do is go ahead and switch over to the computer, get into Easel, and then show you the process of doing the quick design of the toolpath export the file, upload it to the Onefinity, cut it, and then I'll show you the results. All right, let's go ahead and get on with it. Here we are in Easel. What I've done is I've just loaded it. This is a brand new project. I haven't changed anything yet. I'm gonna walk through the process of customizing the project for your specific needs. Now, in this case, I'm going to make a sign. I'm going to use HDPE. I'm gonna use the two color HDPE that you can actually buy from Inventables. I really love this material. It is very durable and it's super easy to mill. So what I wanna do is I wanna go over here and I wanna click this area where it says birch plywood and I want to select the HDPE from the from the drop down here and I have the two colors I mentioned earlier so I'm gonna click on that guy and then the specific type I have is actually white on black it doesn't really too much here what the colors are but it's nice for the visual you can see what you're gonna get in the end all right so this looks pretty good I do want to change this the piece that I have is 12 by 12 so we will change it there and I believe I have a quarter of an inch HDPE so that looks pretty good I'm gonna go ahead and click that guy I'm gonna stick with the stock 1 8 inch bit but we will change the cut settings uh, later on so let's go ahead and get into the design process so what you have over here on the left hand side is the canvas on the right hand side is the preview of your cam so I'm gonna click text here uh, you can see there's a couple different fonts here and there's some of them you need the pro license for some of them you don't if there's a font you want to use it is not an easel then what I would recommend you do is you take a vector program like Inkscape or Affinity Designer for example do all your artwork in there and then import the SVG into the easel it works just as well uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do this tutorial here in easel just to show how to go end-to-end -end using easel so I'm gonna select this uh, Beamio font here so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna type in the text that I want here it's gonna be a no soliciting sign so we're gonna say no uh, soul is sitting here now there's something weird here with this particular font you can see that the T and the I right here are connected and you can actually see that in a preview I don't want that in my design so what I'm going to do is I'm going to back out the ING I'm going to select text here I am going to add a new set of text drag it up here edit this guy right here and I'm going to say ING and what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put these two together so that the fonts are not connected so the T and the I are not connected together. Uh, I don't know why this font is doing this, but I've been playing around with it and it's just, it is what it is. So when you click on a font here, you get this little pop-up here to align them. Uh, you can align them to the left, you can align them to the center, you can align them to the right, and then you can also do baseline, middle, and top. In this case, I just aligned two baseline, so they are on the same line here. Now that we have our two pieces of font here, the thing that we need to check is the depth of cut. So I'm gonna click on the first one here, and it pops this little window up where it says shape and cut. Uh, shape is where you can adjust the location, the size, the font, a variety of other aspects. And then cut here in this tab tells you how deep it wants to cut. In this case, it's gonna cut a 0.1 inches deep, which is uh, pretty good for what we're trying to do here. You can actually go a little less deep than that, which will make the cut a little bit faster. So I'm gonna go with 0.07. Uh, for the cut here, 0.07, uh, and then I'm going to select the ING part, make this 0.07 as well, 0.07, and now they're together. You can see that cut here on the right-hand side of the screen is black. Uh, that is because it is milling away the white portion, so that is the advantage of setting your material properly. So let's go ahead. I'm going to select both of these. I'm going to say edit. I'm going to group them. Uh, I suppose I can actually combine them, but I'm going to group them for now and then I'm gonna slide it down here a little bit. What I wanna do is I'm gonna create another piece of text with the same font. 
slide this up here and I want to say accept cookies. I like cookies and I like when the Girl Scouts deliver cookies to me. So I want to say no soliciting except for when you're selling cookies. <laughs> so all right, let's go ahead and you can see that this one here by default is still at that 0.01. So I'm going to make it 0.07. There you go, and it's a little bigger than I want. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to shrink it down a little bit, just like that. And I'm gonna put it right under here, under the no soliciting part. There you go, just like that, something like that. So we're gonna look at the preview over here, make sure everything looks good, those sizes look good. The eighth inch bit's gonna remove the appropriate amount of materials. It looks pretty good. So let's do a little bit of cleanup here real quick. We're gonna select both of these and we're gonna center them so that they're completely centered on each other. And then what I wanna do is I actually wanna create a bounding box around it. And this is a little complicated in easel. It would be a lot easier to do in Fusion 360, but in easel, what I wanna do is I wanna create a square. I want that square to be 12 long and I want it to be three inches high and then we want it to be at zero, zero. So this is one of the advantages of this pop-up. You can precisely place things. Uh, so I think that's really awesome. And then the other thing I wanna do is I wanna move it to the background, send to back, there you go. And then what I wanna do is I want to change the cut from a pocket to an outline. So that's gonna give us the outline of the sign so we can cut off from our material. So I'm gonna say cut on the outside of the shape path here, and the cut depth needs to go all the way through the uh, quarter inch material. So we're gonna say cut point uh, to six, just to give us a little bit of reveal down on the bottom there. Now, I am not gonna use tabs, I'm gonna hold this down with tape, so I'm gonna unselect use tabs here. And you can see in the preview, what it's done is it's go ahead and it's created uh, some area around that so that the uh, final sign will be detached from the actual uh, sign itself in the end. So now we want to do again just a little bit more cleanup. We want to center this here in that uh, three inch box that we have. That looks pretty good. What we can do is we can actually select all of this and we can say center on the horizontal and then center on the vertical. Oops, we didn't want to center on horizontal. No, we want to just center on vertical. There you go, so it puts everything in the center. When we center it on horizontal, it put the accept cookies and no soliciting in the same line, which is not what we wanted. So there you go, that looks pretty darn good. Now, I do want to add one little feature, which I think is gonna make this sign pop just a little bit. I want to create a line around the outside where you can see the black through the white. So let's do this. I want to copy this square. So I'm gonna say, copy, I want to paste it. And so now I want to move it, uh, move that location down to be at zero. So it's right on top of the other square, but I want to change the cut. Now I want to cut on the inside of the path right here, cut on shape, cut on outside, cut on inside. I'm going to cut on the inside and I want to change this to the 0.07 that we had before. Now you can see what, what has happened here is basically what you're doing essentially is doing a pocket, but you're doing it with a profile type cut because uh, we're just going to run around the outside, whatever the diameter of the bit is. So I think that looks better here. Let me slide this over. I think that looks a little bit better. It makes the sign pop a little bit more, I think, because you get that nice kind of a black border around the outside. Now you could create a pocket around the outside as well if you wanted the border to be a little bit bigger, but I actually think for my purpose, I think this is going to be perfectly fine. So I like this layout. It looks good in the preview, so let's go ahead, let's simulate. Let's see what it says. 44 minutes to cut out with the current cut parameters. That is way too much for a sign this size. So let's look and see what we have in our cut parameters. So automatic cut parameters were set at 15 inches per minute, uh, nine inches for a plunge rate, and a uh, depth per pass of 0.04. Those are very, very conservative, uh, far more conservative than I would ever imagine. <laughs> so I'm gonna click manual here. I'm going to change them, and these are gonna be for my uh, infinity here we're going to do 80 the plunge should be around 40 and the cut depth can be anything really uh, but we're going to do 100 percent depth of cut so that should uh, now decrease the cut time to five minutes that is a much much more realistic cut 
time for this sign of this size. So imagine if you were making these and you wanted to batch these out, you could just replicate this design uh, across that across the sign here you could get uh, if it's three inches tall you can get roughly around uh, four or so of these signs out of it if you were to squeeze it down just a little bit because you got the uh, the width of the cutter on the outside there but this looks good I like this so the next step in the process here is to export this G code so that we can get it into the one fitting we can get cutting so I'm going to select on machine here I'm going to select on uh, I'm going to select on general settings and in here you can see that it says this is the machine inspector so if you had an x car or something it will automatically understand your machine but you can also change some other settings here uh, like your safety height and your step over and a variety of other things we're not really using too many of those right now so we're going to go ahead and just click this download g code button here and it has downloaded it to my computer so the next step now is to get the material mounted onto the machine Let's get the G code uploaded to the Onefinity. Now, if you have an X carve or something like a shape Oco, you have to get that G code over your machine somehow, usually using a USB stick. But because I have the Onefinity here, it's on the network, I will just pull up the Onefinity user interface and I will upload it from my computer. Super easy. So let's go ahead and let's um, let me jump over to the machine here. I'll get the uh, material uh, onto the machine. I'll get it situated and then we'll pull open the Onefinity uh, settings and we'll get the sync carving. All right, stand by. All right, so here we are in front of the computer again. I have all the lights on in the office. I have the machine homed and zeroed, so that should be awesome. If you're not familiar with the terms about homing and zeroing, for example, I will link to some videos down below and above as well so you can get familiarized with some of the basic terms of CNC. All right, so what you see in front of you here is the Onefinity user interface. It is defaulted to the last project that I made, which is fine. It was a sign called Isabella. It was made out of wood, cherry specifically so it is also a v carving that i did in fusion 360 if you're interested but what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to upload this file here i do believe that it downloaded it into my uh, downloads folder here and there you go untitled cnc because i never named it that's fine and so what uh, Onefinity is going to do here is it's going to upload it, it's going to process it, and it's going to show us a preview here, which it looks really great. Let me go ahead and blow that up a little bit here. So the rendering here looks pretty good. I would normally simulate this using the CAM software in Fusion 360, but we don't have that luxury here. So I'm going to kind of cross my fingers and hope that everything's aligned and everything's working out okay. I have the uh, eighth inch down cut bit in the spindle here and we're going to give this a go. I've not used a down cut bit on the HDP before. I've only used up cut bits and sometimes that produces a little bit of uh, swirling on the top. So we'll see how the down cut, what sort of uh, surface finish it produces on the bottom. So let me uh, just go ahead and I'm going to go over here and uh, we're going to fire it up. I'm going to try and get some maybe cell phone video of it cutting so you have that and then um, yeah, then we'll go from there. Well, we took it off of the machine and I think the results are pretty interesting. So let's go ahead and walk you through the results here. So first, let me pause and say, if you're getting value out of this video or if you like it, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing. All right, so here is the final product. I think it looks really well. I uh, vacuumed it very lightly on the machine, but this is how it looked coming off the machine here. So you can see on this side here, it didn't quite, uh, didn't quite cut it all off. I don't think I had the material lined up perfectly to the XY coordinates of the machine. Obviously there's these little pieces that have stuck to it. This is something that happens with this HDPE material all the time. I think using a, a single flute bit might work a little bit better. I do have one of those that I purchased for acrylic. It works really great for acrylic. I think I might try it on this HDPE material. Now it occurred to me as this cut was going on, this is the very first time I've actually made one of these 
designs on my Onefinity. I have made a ton of them on my X-Carve, but uh, first one for the Onefinity. So it turned out pretty well. I will say that the use of the down cut bit maybe was not a good choice. The surface finish on the bottom here is not very awesome. Uh, I have gotten better results out of an upcut bit, but an upcut bit does leave more of these little plastic parts here. So I was hoping the use of the downcut bit would, uh, there wouldn't be any of these little uh, floaties or hanging chads, if you're old enough to know what I mean by that. Uh, but there are, there's plenty of them still. So using the downcut bit did not get rid of them. Maybe slowing the feed rate down a little bit might have helped a little bit, and I'll talk about that as well. So as it was uh, doing the profile pass around the outside, I noticed I was getting an awful lot of chatter across the top here. Uh, not so much on the bottoms and the sides, which is interesting. I don't know why. So I think either the surface speed was too high, the feed rate at 80 inches per minute, uh, or the depth of cut was too deep. I'm not sure which, but you could actually see the bit flexing in the video. And so the surface finish here is very suboptimal. It is, um, it would not be acceptable if I were to sell this to someone. Uh, so it'd be a little bit of cleanup here. And the bottom finish, again, because of the down cut bit is not very awesome as well. So I will have to continue to do a little bit more experimenting with the Onefinity here to get the same results I was getting with my X-Carve. I think just switching to an up cut bit and maybe even a single flute instead of a two flute bit will work, but we'll see. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, five minutes worth of cut time, it turned out really well. I will probably put some magnets on the back here to stick it on our metal door outside and it'll be good to go. Uh, alternatively, you could use something like command strips or something like that if you want it to be easily removable or you could glue it to your door if you want it to be permanent, who knows. But at the end of the day, we're all good to go and I think it turned out wonderfully. So if you're interested in some of the more in-depth CNC videos or if you want to learn more about the CNC terminology that I used earlier, well, then I encourage you to watch this video right here. All right, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for getting this far. Don't forget to be inspired.